Hi everybody, this is Luke. Do you remember this chart? You probably do if you have watched one of the most successful video on this channel. I showed it when I was talking about the settings I changed using the Buffan configuration tool on my 750W BBS02B. By the way, if you are a returning visitor on this channel, consider subscribing. As I already said in that video, I was not the only one who felt this mid-drive kit a little bit unnatural when paddling. When I showed you my idea to overcome this issue, I had different feedbacks from you guys. Some of you didn't agree with my approach, which I know is a bit unconventional. Some of you instead were surprised and thanked me for solving an issue that was really bothering them. But that was the 750 watt version. What about the 500 watt one? Will these settings work there too? Is there something else we should consider? I'll try to answer these questions. The first thing we need to understand is what are we trying to achieve modifying the Buffang settings? Believe it or not, with the Buffang configuration tool, we cannot make our e-bike go faster. Well, sort of. Let me rephrase that. We cannot go any faster than the maximum speed on the maximum assistance level. This is because, already with its stock configuration, the Buffan kit is set to provide the 100% of its current and the 100% of its maximum speed. While we can increase the values for the levels ranging from 1 to 8, we cannot go higher than 100% on the 9th one. This, by the way, is not an issue for me. I don't know about you, but the 500W version provides already a lot of power for its rating. If you need more power over some steep climbs or more speed for your flat lanes, you should probably play with your cogs. Try to change the rear speed according to your needs. Otherwise, you can change the motor's cog. Less teeth will give you more climbing power, while more teeth will give you higher speed. Up to a certain limit, of course. The same rule is true for any mid-drive motor also for our 500W kit. The configuration tool can be very useful for many different things. In the previous video I addressed the issue of the 750W version being too strong on lower assistance levels. This issue can lead to undesired wheelies or, in worst case scenarios, in the complete loss of control of your bike. A straightforward solution, at least for me, was picturing the rising curve of the motor's current settings at different assistance levels. The moment I saw it, I realized I wanted it to increase slowly. That's why I opted for a linear one. Some of you suggested to set the speed value to 100% for all assistance levels. That's not wrong at all, if that's what you actually want. The problem on my e-bike was never related to the speed itself. For each assistance level, I always found the motor stopping its assistance exactly at the right moment. I mean, speed. From that specific speed on, I can handle pedaling all by myself. If I can't make it, by the way, the motor will not allow me to slow down, because it backs me up, assisting me again in case I go below the maximum level of speed. If I just set all the speed to be at 100%, the motor will always try to reach the maximum possible speed, up to the moment when it reaches the maximum power that you set for that level. Let's think about it for a moment. What if you're going down a hill and you keep pedaling with all your assistance levels set at 100% speed? You will constantly go pedaling while the motor is trying to push you even faster than gravity. If that's what you want, sure, setting all speed 100% will allow you to achieve that. I personally think that this approach will result in more energy consumed and that having two limits, one defined in speed and the other one defined in current, will be more appropriate, as long as we set the current one the proper way. Let's consider now this 36V 500W BBS02B motor. What exactly was my problem? I was happy about its max speed, at each assistance level. The issue I had was about how fast that speed was reached, hence the amount of current consumed by the e-bike. But that was not true for each level of assistance. 
I only had this issue on smaller levels, say from 1 to 6, or from 1 to 3 in case you selected 5 levels in total like me. I basically never used level number 5, and level number 4 was configured the right way for my needs. It was on bike lanes and on mixed pedestrian and bike zones where I felt my e-bike too strong, and people around me getting a bit scared. On those situations, I usually stay between level 2 and 3. I simply realized that humans are not scared by speed itself. They're more scared about how quick you reach that certain speed. Let's see how we can regain control over the wild spirit of this 500W mid-drive kit at lowest assistance levels. As usual, I assume that you already downloaded the program, installed the USB drivers, and noted the COM port number in case you want to flash or read your settings. Here, I already saved the default settings from my BBS 02B 500W motor, and I'm gonna work with those values. You might have noticed that the default current and speed values read from the stock motor are exactly the same on both the 750 and the 500W version of the BBS 02B. But besides the assistance level, if you feel your motor starting too aggressively or too weak, you can play with the start current percentage in the pedal assist tab. This value has the same purpose as the start current percentage in the throttle handle tab, but it's specific just for your pedal assistance. Feel free to lower it for a more gentle start, or to increase it if you want your chain to wear out faster. Now back on our basic tab. If you watched the last video about the configuration tool, you will remember our spreadsheet where I copied the values and printed a line from them. The blue one is for the current, the one I want to reshape. The linear profile is the one I used in my 750W BBS 02B. I already talked about it on that previous video, but I also suggest you use this one on a BBS HD if you're looking for a more pleasant experience. The new one I'll show you now, I call it smart, but just for lack of a better name. There's nothing really smart about it, apart from the fact that it rides more than linearly in the beginning, and at the end it approaches the stock current values. Something between default and linear, exactly what I was looking for. The first assistance level is simply 11 times 2 double of what we have in the linear profile. Then the second one should be bigger than the first, but not by much. Its value will be 11 times 3 plus 5.5, which is the result of 11 divided by 2. What I'm doing here is just trying to speed up the growth of the curve. Level 3 will be 11 times 4 plus 11 divided by 3. And so on up to level 6 which is 11 times 7 plus 11 divided by 6. The result of 11 divided by 6 is almost 2, but the key takeaway here is that now the curve has slowed its growth, approaching what the default value was in the beginning. Since I said that level 4 and 5 were fine to me, I decided to keep them as they were in the default profile. And there you have it. Nothing really smart actually, just a profile in between the aggressive behavior of the default one and the gentleness of the linear one I presented last time. Now it's just a matter of copying the current values over to the configuration tool and saving my new custom profile. I already did it, but don't forget to also flash the settings on your beloved Bafang motor. With this new profile, you'll be able to keep the default Bafang mid-drive kit behavior at higher assistance levels, while lowering its current at lower ones. I find it best on my 500W BBS 02B, because it allows me to keep good performances on the road while feeling safer on pedestrian and bike lanes. One thing that's worth mentioning is that this smart profile doesn't affect significantly my battery consumption because I don't use much levels from 1 to 3, and level 4 to 5 stay basically unchanged. By the way, with the old linear profile, I managed to optimize a lot my power consumption. The battery discharges way slower than before, 
So if that's what you're looking for, consider the linear one. Anyway, there is no right or wrong here. I'd like to stress this idea. You can use either profiles on any Buffang midrive kit you got, even the HD. You can also come up with your own personal one that fits your specific needs. I also want to mention two more things. First of all, there is an Android app that you can use connecting your programming cable via USB OTG adapter. In theory, it allows you to configure your kit without messing up with the Windows app and driver. But since you wrote down the wrong values on my motor a couple of times, I don't feel safe enough to recommend it. The second thing I want to mention is the existence of the Egg Rider, which is a small Bluetooth display that allows you to get more information from your e-bike and change its configuration on the go using your smartphone. That's definitely a great option to consider. Personally, I consider it a bit overkill for my personal daily use. I prefer to set my configuration and never touch it again once I find the good one for me. That's also a way to reduce my dependency from phones. And that was it, guys. What motor are you using? What's your configuration? Are you using one of these two profiles? And if this is the case, what do you think about them? I hope you like the content. If you do, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future videos, and if you think these videos are doing something meaningful, consider donating using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.